All right, so we have uh, developed our titles and credits, our opening titles or opening credits, if you will, have everything visible. They're all stacked up, and it may look kind of confusing, but the important thing is we've got every layer in here, and it's got to be stacked in order of, like, from top to bottom. The, the first one should be at the top, and the last one should be at the bottom. Now, there are two layers that are uh, have some effects combined between the two of them. So I've got this layer for the, the main title, and that's important to take and turn into one layer. Because what uh, After Effects is going to want to do, so I right-click on this, and I'm going to try to find the command for uh, Merge Layers, which should be in here somewhere. Sometimes at the bottom. Probably what's going on, I've got the wrong part of the... Uh, let's click over here. So if I click on the right, I get one answer. If I click on the left, I get a different answer. Gosh, it should be in here somewhere. And this should be looking for merge layers. I just don't see it. Oh, here it is, merge layers. So merge layers is down here. So I'm going to take this piece. And so those two layers are one piece now. And uh, that's important to do because when we get this into After Effects, each layer is going to become a layer in After Effects stacked up in order. So let's go ahead and go back to After Effects. And in our other one, this is our, uh, our end credits. This one's really easy. We're just going to roll this and drop it into place. So I'm going to go to After Effects, and uh, I actually went through about an hour of trying to figure out why something wasn't working. So I'm going to take the opening credits and drag and drop it in here. Now, this part's really important. Um, I've been trying to do this by importing as a composition, and that normally works, but I found a glitch that was causing that to occur. So try Composition Retain Layer Styles, and that's going to allow us to work with that in, in, in that place. So you want to make sure you've got a composition retain layer sizes. If you do composition, it can often uh, crash the program, which is pretty irritating. So make sure you choose Merge Layer Styles into the footage and click OK. So once I've got this, it now brings it instantaneously into place. And if we open up this new, sequ uh, new composition it makes, we see everything stacked up. And uh, this can be kind of like confusing unless you figure out exactly how you want to work this. Now, Right now, my composition is set to be uh, three seconds long, which is not really long enough. Um, so this is uh, one second, two second, three second. So I'm going to change that by choosing Composition, Settings. And I'm going to set this to Start Time Code to Zero, Duration. Let's put this, uh, let's just go with um, a minute and 30 seconds and zero, zero frames. So that's one minute, 30 seconds, zero frames. So now it's going to be a lot longer. And if I zoom out on this by grabbing this right here, I can see everything's a lot shorter. Now, before I get too busy with this, uh, I want to assume that each piece is going to show for about five seconds. And right now, are they stacked up in order? Busted Productions, Cold Day in Fiji. So all these things are stacked up. And I'm not really sure why this wound up as a separate composition, but that's fine. That'll work fine. So going to take all these pieces of a select at once. The goal is to get as much done as possible instead of having to repeat yourself. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to make this last until about five seconds. So I'm going to five seconds. I'm just going to grab all these that are selected and drag them out to here. Now at this point I like to zoom in because I want to be sure that they're all at about five seconds. It looks like about a frame short. So that should be right up there. And you can zoom in on this like crazy and see uh, really to a frame how close you got that. So now they're all the same duration. Oops, looks like I missed Cold Day in Fiji. Let's grab that one. And I think what I have to do to make that longer is open it and uh, change this one to five seconds because somehow it took two layers and made them into one. And uh, let's set this to five seconds. So this is just the piece from my main title. And the reason I did the uh, more interesting main title is I wanted more fancy design in it. Wanted to look good. So I'm going to take these two layers and extend them out. So now when I go back to the main timeline for opening credits, I can now take this and stretch it to make it last the five seconds. All right. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to do one thing to make it last for all these pieces at once. So if I choose every layer, then I can take this all and I can push uh, T for opacity because don't you know opacity starts with T or is it O for opacity? There we go. T. T for opacity. So with everything selected, I'm going to do it with everything selected. I've got to select all these layers at once. Make sure they're all selected. And now we're going to change the opacity. So 
to begin with, we want 100% opacity at about, let's go with uh, half a second, which is about 15 frames. Usually, that should be half a second. And uh, we're going to add an opacity keyframe. Now, when I click one keyframe, it does it for all selected layers. And it looks like I missed one here for one of my stars or actresses. Maybe. I'm just going to check this. Or that layer is missing some effects or something. What's going on here? Uh, so, oops, you know what that did? It's got T for opacity. I want to make sure I've got all the keyframes I need for this. I'm not missing anything. So it usually works, and this one of them showed up a little shorter. Okay, that's good. Now I'm going to back up to zero. Now with the first keyframe, you have to use the stopwatch. But if you do that again, it'll delete all your keyframes. So let's bring them all back. Let's go back there. So the new keyframes are made when you change the value. So now I've got two keyframes. And now I'm going to go to uh, 415. And that's assuming everything wants to last... Um, to uh, to five seconds. So I'm going to back this off and stop it there. So here, I can click this button right here. This is uh, in the keyframe nav section. There's a diamond add or remove keyframe in current timeline. So it's going to maintain 100 until there. Now we go to five seconds. And, and somehow when I keep pushing enter, it opens the, the layer up. So now I've got this one, and I can drop these all back to zero. So now I've got a nice fade in for every layer. So, here we go. So I've got them all fading in and fading out. But we want to now distribute. So now, now we get into the working part. So we're going to take this and zoom out. And I'm going to collapse all these layers again. Because now I'm just going to work with time. So I'm going to move one section at a time. And I may have too much time in my timeline. I may have not enough. We'll see. So I'm going to try to get this. And not a bad idea to zoom in a little bit, just so you can see a little more acutely how the time is working there. So now I'm going to go select the next one, and I'm deselecting. And I'm going to take this one and this one. So moving them all at once. Oops, sorry. Let's just get this. This one here, I guess. That one stays there, starring. So now these are all going to move over in time. Notice I didn't move the background because uh, the background is going to probably stay black all the way through, unless I add this on top of video. But as you may recall, I did install um, some effects on this, so no matter what the background is, it should show up. So now I'm going to get one layer at a time, or one section at a time, move them over, and now I'm going to get this one. You have to deselect by clicking on nothing. So now I'm getting all of these, moving them over, and that's essentially how, how that works. So once again, the important thing is that these are stacked in order and they play in order. There is one piece at the end that's a copy of another layer. So as you may recall, in Photoshop, I made a whole bunch of copies of those layers to, uh, to get them to stack up in order and to be able to quickly and easily edit those out. But I did wind up with an extra in there. So the extra is identifiable because it says copy. And so I'm going to go back to After Effects, and I'm going to take this layer copy, and I'm going to press the Delete key on the keyboard. So now I've got all the ones I need in here. So this looks like it took about a minute. And you could change the duration, a quick and easy way to change the duration of this Sequence is to go to uh, here. And this button here is going to be the work area. So if I drag this left, this is not the zoom at the top. This is the work area. So I'm going to grab this and right-click it and choose uh, Trim Comp to Work Area. So now the sequence is the duration I need it to be for the work I'm doing. So now I've got this in place. That's rock and roll ready. And the next one's a lot easier. So the next thing I'm going to do is, uh, let's see, let's close that sequence. And I'm going to right-click here. I'm going to close this one also. So right-click here, and I'm going to import. And this time I'm going to import my other file, which is my end credits. So import again. This time I'm going to... Um, here it is. I want to set this composition, retain layer sizes. You could also do this as, a, uh, as footage and choose the layer you want. But let's just do it this way to stay consistent. 
So now I've got the whole thing in there. Now the problem with this import is it made my composition the same size as that whole huge uh, piece of text. So let me open up this. Let me get rid of that background. And uh, no matter which one I work with, they both have that, that thing that's too tall. So now I'm going to take either one of these versions. It, it, made, it made two different compositions for some reason. I'm not really clear on that. But what I can do is change the composition settings. And if it's 1920, the height should be 1080. And that makes it the size of my other co uh, co compositions. So I'm going to drag this down. And here I'm going to go to P for position. So I click on this, press P for position. I'm going to click there. So now I've got that down in the position for starting. And I'm going to add a keyframe for position. Oops, I already got that in there. And uh, I might want to even just pause it for a second. So this is at the frames level. So this is five seconds long. So again, I've made a composition that's only five seconds long. When I imported this stuff, so new composition or composition settings. And let's guess that this might take a minute. So one minute, zero seconds, zero frames. And if you read it here, it shows what it's going to have. So now it's longer. And um, let's extend this out. So we're going to see this thing for the whole time. Oops, that's a, that's a, that's a sequence. Sorry, I'm making some mistakes here. Open the sequence up. And let's stretch this one out to the same duration. So um, this composition needs to be changed in duration. Here we go. And make this one also a minute. So it's one minute, zero seconds, zero frames. And let's stretch this one out. Now, I could have just done it in this one as well because it's, it's the same thing. But I've already got it in the other one. So here's this. Let's stretch this out to its duration. And we got this keyframe for position. So now I'm going to go to out here somewhere and move the position. So I've got the first keyframe. Now when I change the value of the position, it's going to make a second keyframe. So I just drag that up. And I'm using the shift key while I drag that up with the selection tool. So let's see how fast that moves. And it seems kind of slowish. Now if it's going too slow, which it certainly seems to be doing, then we can... Um, We can speed that up by dragging the keyframes closer together. So less time is faster, more time is slower. So that's kind of rolling through. And it's going to be kind of clicky because it's figuring out uh, all the frames. So you want to experiment with this to get it the way you want it to be. And uh, mine's actually not playing properly. Let's go through there. And it's playing not that fast. So it's working. And the way you can test this out is by bringing it into Adobe Premiere. One of the things you can do to check out the speed better is to reduce not the size, but the resolution of the playback. That does not affect the resolution of the export, just of the playback. So let's see if this works. And I think that's going to work, but I'm not really clear so far. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, I've got both of my opening credits and my end credits figured out and worked into place. And here's my end credit. Uh, Opening credits are somewhere in here. All right, so I've got this one, and I've got my closing credits. So the next thing I'm going to do is import these into Adobe Premiere and wrap it up.